Hey Racer fans, thanks for checking in. Robin Miller. Uh, for the next few weeks I think we're just going to concentrate on the tough guys in racing. Now I know everybody that races cars at some times thinks they're brave and they probably are and they have their moments but I'm talking about the toughness that we don't see very much anymore and maybe we never will again. Uh, some of the things these guys endured are, are unbelievable and there's going to be a, a series of guys we're going to talk about uh, but today we're going to start with one of the toughest, A.J. Foyt. You might have heard of him. Uh, here he is sporting a t-shirt at Indianapolis back in 1958 when he was a rookie. As we know, A.J. had three-way bypass a few weeks ago in Houston. And the mailbag is just full of questions every week. How's A.J. doing? Can we talk to him? Can we send him anything? Well, he's had a little bit of a setback. He, he had some infection, and, and so they're, they're treating that. And so... He's been back and forth with the hospital. I talked to Lucy Foyt this morning. She says he has good days and bad. I talked to AJ about eight or nine days ago, and I'd sent him the book Fearless, Gene Crucian's book on open wheel racing after World War II, and he said he really liked it. And I said, I knew you would. It's all pictures. Of course you'd like it. You'd have to read it. So he laughed, and you can tell. I mean, he's, you know, I think he thought he'd be out of the hospital pretty quick, but, you know, he's almost, he'll be 80 years old next next month. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, strong struggle for him, and... Uh, I can tell you this, as tough as he is, he's come through killer bees and almost drowning in snakes and broken necks and broken backs and pulverized feet and he beat sepsis a couple years ago. All the things that have tried to kill this guy, this, this will be just one more thing he beats and I think he'll be back home pretty quick and, and on the men pretty quick and he'll be at Indy I think in May for his 57th straight in Indianapolis 500 and we look forward to seeing him. The other guy I want to talk about is somebody that a lot of people have probably long since forgotten but you shouldn't. His name's Joe Leonard. Here's a picture of Joe Leonard with Mario and A.J. Foyt back in the 60s. Old pal Joe Leonard at Gasoline Alley. And of course you remember Joe Leonard in the turbine pace of the 1968-8500, which he came within nine laps of winning before his car broke. What a lot of people may not remember is Joe Leonard was a badass on two wheels. Here he is. He was a three-time AMA flat track champ, leading the pack on the mile which is still some of the greatest racing in the world. Joe's the first guy that ever went from two wheels to four wheels in the United States and made a success of it. Yeah, John Surtees and Mike Haywood did it in Formula One, but Joe Leonard was the first. Paul Goldsmith followed his footsteps. But the great thing about Joe Leonard was is he went from two wheels to four and became a two-time USAC national driving champion for Vels Parnelli Jones. And then he got hurt real bad in Ontario when the tire blew and and he, his, his life was pretty much agony for a long time after that with all the infection and all the injuries and the, the medical bills and the lawsuits. And it wasn't Joe, that, you know, Joe Leonard was a racer, true and true. He didn't want to have to go through all that, and he didn't deserve it, but he did. He had to go through it. And then a couple years ago, uh, I, I'd seen him at Monterey, and he looked pretty good. And then he got hit with this massive stroke. And Steve Greger, who's Joe's best buddy that keeps an eye on him every day, said the doctor told him that the stroke Joe Leonard had would have killed 99.9% .9 of the people in the United States. Well, as we know, old Joe's pretty tough. His nickname's the Pelican. That's what A.J. nicknamed him back in uh, the late 60s because when they were teammates at IndyCar racing, he said, you're just like a Pelican, Leonard. You swoop in and take the money and leave. So uh, Pelican Joe, yeah, I talk to him about once every two or three months. I try to send him you know, a book an hour, every now and then to keep his... Uh, keep him amused. He loves to hear from Gurney and Foyt and Bobby Unser when they call him up on his birthday, which which they always do. And uh, he's in a full-time care unit, but he gets out two or three times a year to go to motorcycle races. And uh, I can tell you this, uh, it's hard to understand him sometimes on the phone, and he's paralyzed. One of The right side of his, his body's pretty paralyzed, but he still can get around on his walker. And I don't think of ever anybody with more spirit than Joe Leonard. So, uh, in, the, in, the, in the weeks to come, we're going to talk to we're going to talk about a guy named Lee Koonsman, a guy named Gary Bentonhausen. I think you guys are familiar with him. This is going to be the tough guy theme. And uh, from a candy ass to the two of the toughest guys I know, A.J. Foyt and Joe Leonard, Merry Christmas. We'll see you down the road, boys.